This video today is going to be completely different to any video that I've done before and it is really close to my heart. And the reason that I am releasing this video and going through a personal story that I've never shared on YouTube before is I am receiving quite a lot of messages on my social media platforms from students who are struggling. And I've never actually shared the struggles that I had. So I want to tell you the full story of the struggles that I went through and how I've managed to turn those into a positive to get to where I am today to give you some hope if you are also struggling. So whether you are currently struggling with physical or mental health, any sort of challenging home circumstances or anything really that is affecting your ability to attend school or focus at school, this video is for you. So I wanted to share this very personal story with you, not to focus on the tough times, but to show you that something really positive can come out of things, even if you feel like everything is stacked against you and there's no chance that you could ever change things or improve because that is exactly how I felt when I was a teenager and that is not at all how I feel now and I've changed my life around. So let's start right back at the beginning of this journey. When I was a teenager, you would never know from looking at me now or from knowing how healthy I am now, but I actually missed huge chunks of my GCSEs, A-levels and a small amount of my degree. And that's because when I was 13, I was diagnosed with the disease ulcerative colitis. Now this is a bowel disease which similar to Crohn's, you have Crohn's and colitis, I had colitis and there's varying degrees in severity of this disease and I had an extremely severe case of this disease. So bad that from when I was first diagnosed, I was in hospital for quite a long period of time before they managed to get it under control with drugs. And I had lots of consultants, medical students come to see me because I was such what they called a classic case and severe case that I made a brilliant case study for medical students. So that's the start point. So I was on a whole mixture of medicines, but the main ones, at least I can remember, were steroids. And then after that point, it was an immunosuppressant drug, azathioprine. And with these medicines, I would recover or go into remission, which is the term used, because it is a chronic illness, it's never gonna go away. But when you're not currently having symptoms, you're in remission. And I would go into remission when I was on high doses of the medicines. The high doses of these drugs have harmful side effects. You can't live on them. So they'd have to wean me off them over a period of usually about three weeks. And then as soon as I was on the lowest doses or off them, my illness would come back flare up full force and I'd end up back in hospital. And this cycle continued from the age of 13 to 15, trying out different medicines, seeing what might work, and basically nothing did. I could only get well if I was on full dose of drugs that made you ill anyway. So this wasn't a long-term solution. I couldn't live like this. And the decision was made by the consultants when I was 15, or just before my 15th birthday in fact, that I would have to have my large intestines removed or your colon. That that is the organ which is diseased with ulcerative colitis. And your large intestines, as you probably know as a biology student, I assume you're a biology student if you're watching this, is the organ in your digestive system which has the main function of absorbing water. Which you might think, how on earth do you live without that? But your small intestines can actually adapt and start absorbing more water. As you can see, I'm alive and well and I don't have a large intestines. So what this meant for me was, I was scheduled to have two operations. The first first operation was to remove the entire large intestines and then have a colostomy bag. The second operation was to then remove the colostomy bag and instead have my small intestines rearranged in position to make what they call a J-shaped pouch, which can then adapt to take on the role of the large intestines, which is mind blowing that your body can do that. But that was the plan. And step one went very well. I had my large intestines removed. They actually, I think it was in the first operation, made the internal pouch, but you had to leave that to heal before you could actually start letting it do its job. So that's why I had to have a colostomy bag for a period of time to let my insides heal before you then actually had digestive food passing through it. And I was meant to have a second operation, I think it was maybe a year later, but I actually got what's known as adhesions, maybe three to four months after the first operation. And adhesions is when you have abdominal surgery, it can make your intestines more sticky and actually twist 
the knot together and that is what happened some of my intestines i don't know if it was they stuck together or they got knotted but it basically just became a dead end so whenever i was eating it couldn't go through and it was swelling 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 to the point it might have burst and i might have died so i was just constantly throwing up because the food couldn't go through which by the way is the most excruciating pain you can ever imagine that feeling inside so i had to have an emergency operation where they unknotted it all and because they were doing the emergency operation they decided to coincide that with the other operation they were going to do anyway so they then removed the colostomy bag and had everything running as it was going to be so internally just rearranged the small intestines so then it was recovering from all of that operation i then actually had adhesions a second time a year later which by the way if you are going to have any of these operations adhesions are so incredibly rare that the doctors were quite surprised i got it and the fact that i got it a second time they were saying it was like 0.001% likelihood that this ever happens to someone so it isn't common so please don't worry about that but the point is what this meant for me was i had that on my 15th birthday which was the start of my gcse's i then had two more operations the recovery from severe open abdominal surgery it does take a long time to recover from that this was all going on through year 10 and year 11 so i missed i think maybe two terms at least one term fully of year 10 and the council had to organize homeschooling for me so that i wouldn't fall too far behind when i was really ill before the operation that was year nine so i missed large chunks of year nine most of year 10 some of year 11 because i had another emergency operation then and that was all during my gcse's i also became mildly ill again in year 12 which meant i was absent from school for a period of time now the reason i tell you all of this it was a bit of a long-winded version to tell you all of this is to share with you how much schooling i missed which people are often surprised by because i did very well in my gcse's and my a levels and at university i'm a teacher and people see me as this biology guru on youtube or at least i hope you do and they think that i must have just been smooth sailing everything was easy and it's hard to think that something like this would ever be possible for you and that just wasn't the case at all nothing was smooth sailing nothing was easy it was incredibly painful incredibly hard but it was still possible my challenges at times i felt might hold me back forever and i didn't want my disease to define my grades or my future so that is when i decided to really put actions in place to make sure that i could overcome these setbacks because i didn't want it to determine my future so if you are dealing with health problems right now whether it's physical health mental health challenging home circumstances and you really feel there is no way things are going to improve that you are so far behind at school that it's a lost cause this is why i wanted to share this with you because i was in that same position for the reasons that i've just shared with you but i still managed to get those top grades and get to a position in a career that I wanted to. And the reason this is possible for me was, number one, I was very, very fortunate that I had an incredibly supportive family, friends, and school. Without those three things, maybe it wouldn't have been possible. But other thing was, what I was in control of, I wasn't in control of those things, but what I was in control of was my attitude towards it and what I would do about it. And that's why I decided to not dwell on everything that was stacked against me and going wrong and instead focus on all of the positives, any small win and what I could change and be in control of. So for me, that became work. I knew that I was an able student, I loved school and I knew that if I would take on board every bit of extra help that my school was offering and put actions in place that I could improve. And that's probably why I became such an effective independent learner because I was at home, teaching myself and if you've ever seen me briefly talk about this this is one of the reasons I created the YouTube channel because I was teaching myself when I was 15 but YouTube didn't exist then so I was doing it through textbooks so that's why I create these videos is to help everyone but also if there's anyone that is having to teach themselves I hope that my videos help you in a way that I wish I could have had access to at that point but if you are dealing with these challenges I see you I understand because it's not just about feeling 
staying so far behind in your education that you might never catch up. It's the feeling so far behind in the social aspect. Everyone's at school. You feel like you're missing out. You feel like you're missing out on all the social side of things. It left me feeling isolated, left out, and like I was a ghost, basically. When you're ill, it's not just you're struggling with the pain or sickness, whatever the illness might be. You're also struggling with the feeling of being isolated, left out, feeling like you're left behind from the crowd as well. You can feel anxious, feel like a complete ghost, or at least I did. And it's all of that wrapped up. But if you can take control in terms of setting yourself things to do when you feel well enough to start to improve and really focus on the positives, the small wins to bring back some joy into your life, that is what I did. And that is how I managed to get a good set of GCSEs, a good set of A-levels and get to where I am now. So that's why I wanted to share this. So many people are going through their own battles and if you are, it's not just you. So many of them are invisible. Most people probably had no idea that that is what I went through because I am now fit and healthy and successful. So I wanted to share this so you have that hope and positivity that the same can be true for you. It wasn't an easy time and I would absolutely not want to go through it again, but it has made me the person I am today. It has made me more determined, more independent, and more positive than I ever used to be because that is the three qualities I had to keep pushing to get me out of that situation that I was in. And if it wasn't for that, I really don't think I would have misestric biology now because that has taken sheer determination and the driving force was often, I want to help students who might need help like I did. And also everything I went through is what sparked my love of biology as well, which is why I picked biology. So if you are going through a tough time, please, don't give up. Focus on the small wins, keep moving forward, no matter how slowly it is. Tough times might feel like they're gonna last forever, but they don't, especially if you try and take control of aspects that you are able to, and they can lead to amazing opportunities and skills developed in you that you never thought you would have. And remember, you are absolutely not alone. I'm cheering each and every one of you along the way on this A-level journey or whatever educational journey you are on. Let me know in the comments if this resonated with you or if you just need a little bit of moral support so I can cheer you on in the comments. So that is it. Thank you for listening to my story and I hope it gives you the faith to believe in the own strength that each and every one of you does have. You just have to find it and believe in it. You've got this and I'll see you next week.